The other day, a box of 960 German baby wipes arrived and I thought it was happening again. Once I regained consciousness, I opened the box since I needed the wipes for the cold sweat and urine that was soaking my entire body. Turns out it was a Dreamcast fishing controller, which was the last thing I needed before hitting the digital lakes. I've already got all the other gear I need, including my can of bait. Let's see. Pizza tastes even better cold, uh-huh. Why didn't the eagles just fly them to Mordor? I think this one might be a little stale. The next card simply reads, Star Wars. Kinda weird. Something about Waluigi. Anyway, you get the joke. You get what I've done here. So let's take a look at the controller before we talk about the games. See it? Okay then. Now, each game today will be judged on two metrics how much I like it, and how much I like the game's intro. First up, Sega Bass Fishing. Ah, the serenity. Until you, the Y2K safe techno fisherman, appears to blow these bass right out of the water. This high energy intro makes a lot of big promises. Luckily, we love big promises here at the Infinite Review, so this intro is a big one. Oh, a big one! Over 20 years after its release, this is still the fishing game in the minds of most people. Assuming most people have a fishing game in their minds. And it deserves to be. It's just solid. Like many games originally designed for the arcade, it really only does one thing, but does it extremely well. Don't be fooled by this tournament rules screen, there's very little variety here. You catch bass, and you hope they're big ones. You may find yourself cursing the stupid fish for not biting, but then you realise they're the ones outsmarting you, which is far more frustrating. Complete the three main areas and you'll unlock a secret fourth location, a scary castle in the middle of a lake strewn with dead soldier's armour. They didn't have to do anything this cool, but they did. Speaking of which, listen to this. Incredible. Oh hey, I unlocked Straight Worm. I think I went to school with that guy. Super big! Lake Masters Pro Dreamcast Plus. It's a title that comes on strong, so I welcome this relaxed intro, complete with the best thing about this era of video games, text floating around a rotating 3D object. Okay, an average size. The game itself, well, it's so dull the camera refused to focus on it. Honestly, you're not missing much. All this game offers is photographs of lakes and an endless selection of lures to unsuccessfully make up for that. Don't worry about picking the wrong one, you're not going to see any fish regardless which makes this experience a little too realistic. Save yourself some time and money by staring at a postcard instead. Small one. To go from that to the intro of Sega Marine Fishing is definitely a wet fish slap to the face. Everything about this screams. Nobody is gonna call fishing games boring while I'm around. God damn, fuck. Oh, a big one. This is one of those games that reminds me that if you ever wanted to recreate the Dreamcast aesthetic, you simply make everything really loud and make sure nobody can hear what the characters are saying. Oh god, a shark, hang on. Come here to me, you big bollocks. Yes! Jesus, lads, mind yourselves with that. A nice feature is you can check out everything you've caught in an aquarium, and there are mini games which offer slight variations on the gameplay. Of all the games on the list, this was the one that made me appreciate the fishing controller most, thanks to just how much it expects you to fight when reeling in a fish. You simply wouldn't get half as much fun from this game when playing it with a regular controller. That's my having fun face? Jesus Christ. No! Huh, I guess that's all the intro we're gonna get for Bass Rush Dream Eco Gear Power Worm Championship. Oh wait, here we go!
Well, I guess they worked with what they had, which was not a lot. Small one. Having learned from Sega Marine Fishing that the fun part is catching fish, it's hard not to feel a little let down when one of these games doesn't seem to have any fish in it. Not that I blame them, I wouldn't stick around for this horrible sounding boat either. Eventually I did catch a glimpse of a bass, which was more than enough excitement for me. Look, maybe Bass Rush Dream Eco Gear Power Worm Championship turns into a high octane thrill ride once you get a bite, but I'll never know about it. Okay, an average size. Next up we have the intro to Real Fishing Wild, which courts controversy by opening with a book. But it's a book about fish, so it's okay. It's very nice and tranquil, despite the piranhas. I mean, hell, it makes me want to fish and not read, so... FISH! Aw, oh, look at this, you get your own cabin! Very cozy, very nice. There's a peacefulness to this I like, and I think it's my favourite of the non arcade style Dreamcast fishing games. I also like that you could potentially catch all kinds of fish, not just bass. And I did catch fish, I just didn't land them. I'll return for that arowana in time. Okay, an average size. Finally, we come full circle with Sega Bass Fishing 2, and what an intro. While the other games have opted for a more modest and disingenuous approach, here we're shown how sexy and glamorous the world of bass fishing really is. I bet you thought all those sex pun t-shirts were just jokes, didn't you? <laughs> no sir, if you fish, you fuck, and stadiums full of people applaud you for it. This one's huge! The game itself I was a little disappointed by. It adds more, sure, but none of it makes the fishing itself more fun. It just goes to show how right they got it the first time. Still, check out Carter's power stance. Okay, an average size. That may be all the fishing games, but I can't let you go without showcasing this controller's inexplicable compatibility with Soul Calibur. You swing to the sides or up and down for different attacks, but the best part is cranking the reel to perform a soul charge. It's a great way to feel like you are Valdo without having to do any stretching, external or otherwise. And you may already be thinking that this fishing controller isn't all too different from a Wiimote, and Virtua Tennis really shows you just how ahead of the curve it was. Seven years before everyone smashing their televisions with Wii Sports, the Dreamcast fishing rod was doing the same thing. Come on, Tim! Honestly, Sega must have been bucking when they saw Wii Sports selling over 80 million copies. The world would be a very different place today if Big the Cat had liked bowling instead of fishing. And yes, yes, I was getting to it. Please calm down. The Big the Cat fishing minigame from Sonic Adventure, which, no, I'm sorry, does not work with the fishing controller. But it's wild to think that around the turn of the millennium, Sega were so certain that fishing was what the people wanted that they would make arcade machines for it, then a peripheral for people to play those games at home, but also dedicate a chunk of their flagship game starring their most iconic character on their brand new console to fishing. Sonic Adventure was Sega saying, this is the future. This is why we wrote Adventure on the box. And there's a fishing game in it. They made up a whole new character for it. The amount of confidence that you'd have to have in people loving fishing games that you'd stick one into the new Sonic game which people are buying to go fast in, is staggering. If you asked me what the opposite of a Sonic game is, I'd probably say a fishing game. And yet here we are. Finally, I'd just like to say that in order to capture this footage, I had to play quite a lot of Sonic Adventure, and I resented every minute of it. 